Nothing less than an eighth consecutive World Championship double will be good enough for Mercedes in 2021. So yet again, the question it must answer with the newly launched Mercedes W12 is how do you improve on perfection? The definition of perfection changes from year to year in Formula 1 because the goalposts move constantly. But Mercedes benefits from an effective company culture that prevents personnel resting on their laurels that, combined with its resources and facilities, has kept it at the forefront of F1 since the start of the V6 Turbo Hybrid era in 2014. But there are enough changes this season, not least the small but significant aerodynamic rule tweaks where gains can be made relative to the opposition. This means Mercedes has plenty of work to do to ensure the W12 continues the team's unprecedented run of success. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the race's pre-season Formula 1 coverage, and so you know the moment there's something new to watch, hit the notifications bell. New developments and what it's keeping secret. The first thing that catches the eye about the Mercedes W12 is nothing to do with the performance, but instead its striking new livery. This includes the return of some silver at the rear, more Ineos red and an increase in Petronas's emerald green, as well as the black adopted last year that still covers the majority of the car. It certainly makes an impact. But there's also plenty that has changed that will impact the lap times. Technical Director James Allison describes the Mercedes W12 as very far from the carryover car that it was expected to be. While the team remains tight-lipped on where it has spent its two development tokens, it has confirmed that the monocoque and gearbox remain unchanged from last year. Aerodynamic development, of course, remains free. The front wing concept is still the same partly loaded outboard design, but with the trailing edge of the end plate at the top reduced to allow more outwash. The inboard end of the front flaps are now more aggressively detailed, with a short slot gap in the fourth element from the front. Because of this, the fifth element has to stop where the slot gap starts. But, of course, this is only a launch spec front wing, and Mercedes did use different designs at different times last year, so we'll have to see what runs in testing in Bahrain later this month. The front brake ducts have also been narrowed at the top section. This will be to allow cleaner airflow coming off the trailing edge of the front wing towards the barge boards. Interestingly, this is the opposite approach to Red Bull, which has narrowed the lower part of its front brake ducts. On top of the side pods, there's also a change to the mounting of the wing mirrors. The mirror mounts have a larger radius between the vertical and horizontal part. This offers a small aerodynamic advantage, but the race's technical expert Gary Anderson suggests there are also other benefits. They will not obscure the driver's view quite so much when placing the front wheel precisely in a corner, and they will also be more efficient structurally. When you build a new car, stiffer and lighter is always the challenge for every component. Mercedes continues to set standards for bargeboard complexity, with a number of key changes visible. These vanes all work together to channel the airflow, and an understanding of the off-surface flow regime that CFD allows will be critical in optimising this area. There are also clear changes to the engine cover and side pod packaging. What Allison called a rather sexy looking bulge appears to have been created by a combination of the slimmer shape and the repackaging of the mechanical and cooling components to follow the new lines of the 2021 specification floor. The car launched with a bland and basic floor which Allison admitted was to keep the developments Mercedes has come up with in that area secret. He doesn't want to allow rivals the chance to see the detail work it has done before the car runs for the first time in Bahrain testing. This is because two of the aerodynamic regulation tweaks relate to the floor, one the triangular cut towards the rear wheels, and the other the elimination of the slots. The dual-axis steering pioneered by Mercedes last year has also been outlawed. Combined with the increase in minimum weight by 6 kilos for 2021, this has also given the team, in Allison's words, a few more kilos to spend in improving performance. More engine gains Mercedes-Benz high-performance powertrains in Bricksworth has set the standard throughout F1's V6 turbo hybrid era and has made further gains this year with a new M12 e-performance engine. Three areas have been focused on. Firstly, there's the usual development of the technology of the engine. The thermal efficiency has been increased again, partly thanks to improvements to the combustion process. 
There are also modifications to the turbocharger to minimise its impact on heat rejection. Mercedes says these changes have resulted in a gain in power. The engine block has also been modified, with the aluminium structure of last year replaced by what has been described only as one using a new alloy. Secondly, the reliability has been improved by fixing what are described as design issues in the 2020 power unit. Changes have been made to the ERS to make it more resilient. This includes alterations to the MGUK design introduced last year that did suffer from some failures, but Mercedes believes what it calls a new, more consistent manufacturing regime will improve its reliability. The third area is the most ominous for the rest, with Mercedes-Benz High Performance Powertrain's managing director, Hewell Thomas, promising some completely new innovations that have been introduced. While it's not clear exactly what these innovations are, the race has heard an interesting suggestion that Mercedes has an innovative and very compact new version of the well-established variable air inlet trumpet system, which had been legal again in Formula 1 since 2015, having been outlawed previously. This allows the trumpets to be constantly adjusted, lengthened for torque gains or shortened for power, with their curved, rather than conventional straight designs, allowing them to be packaged in a restricted space. We've also heard a gain has been made in terms of cooling the intake charge air for the start of the race. But whatever the change is, this proves yet again that, even in the eighth year of this engine formula, Mercedes keeps finding ways to improve. Adapting to the cost cap. Allison describes the introduction of the $145 million cost cap in 2021 as the biggest difference this season. Not only has this had an impact on the development budget and the staffing levels, but it also impacts the car. The restricted spending means that part life has been extended in some areas, which Allison says has impacted much of the unseen design work underneath the bodywork. There's another impact in terms of the aerodynamic testing permitted. Not only has wind tunnel and CFD work been restricted, but a sliding scale has been introduced based on the reverse of last year's Constructors Championship order. This means the amount of CFD and wind tunnel work reduces in 2.5% steps, from the most, 10th place Williams, to the least, Mercedes. While this will be reset based on the Constructors Championship order at the end of June, few would bet against Mercedes, still being worst off in the second half of the year. Team stability. While much has changed at Mercedes in recent times, in particular the shift in ownership which is now split between Mercedes, Ineos and Toto Wolff with each owning a third, the core elements remain. Wolff remains as team principal with Allison as technical director, while star driver Lewis Hamilton signed up for another season. Although the questions about what will happen in 2022 have already started, it means Mercedes has the most successful driver in F1 history on its books alongside his favourite teammate Valtteri Bottas. And while Thomas succeeded Andy Cowell at the head of Mercedes-Benz high performance powertrains last year, the transition was well managed and all the key ingredients remain in place. Worryingly for the rest, despite this year's rule changes, Mercedes remains the best equipped to tackle all the challenges of 2021 and also produce a great car for the major rules overhaul coming in 2022. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the new Mercedes W12 and its new livery, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe.